A young Pat Doherty came across netball by chance, but tonight we recognise her as a champion of the game, a captain of Australia, a successful touring captain, and a true innovator. It was a, an inner sort of passion. I, I loved it. Um, I played all around, for want of a better word, the countryside. I played in nearly every night in the week. Pat's first national selection was in 1952 for a non-touring Australian side. See, they used to announce an Australian team every year, but it didn't mean they toured. They'd, they'd announce Australia and the rest. And on the Saturday, this is going back to the interstate carnivals, Australia would play the rest. And um, it was quite fierce competition there because you might have been playing against somebody that was in your own team, you know, and that did happen to me. And, um, but she broke her arm, poor thing. In 1956, she was named captain of the team that toured England, the experience of a lifetime for the young women who travelled by boat and developed perfect suntans while training on the upper decks. Station Pier was a mass of people, not because of us, mainly because it was a new liner. It was very sumptuous and a lovely way to go. And of course, 10, girl, like 10 of us and Miss McConkie and Miss Clark, we had a small ball. Boys were off the menu, and because they were off the menu, they swarmed around us like bees at a honey pot, because there were 10 of us, and uh, a couple of the girls could sing, and a couple of them could play piano. We had one girl who was an absolute card, and she fell in love with the unisex barber. So by the time we got to England, she was nearly bald, <laughs> because we were told no men, but Betty Robbie was, you know, definite that she was going to see this Mario, every second day or something to get a haircut. <laughs> Under Pat's captaincy, the Australians defeated all England 14 to 11 at Haringey in front of a crowd of 8,000. And we were all at the right age. You know, I was the eldest and I was 24. You know, we were all kicking goals and very fit, very fit girls. Her diminutive stature was dwarfed by her legendary speed on court. According to coaching legend Joyce Brown, it was Pat who invented throwing on the run, a mercurial player who took that extra step and delivered the ball in flight. I used to get pulled up so often. Uh, there's, a, there's a very thin line between whether you're stepping or not. The solution to that is get rid of the ball. You know, not, don't worry about your feet, get rid of the ball. Standing at a tiny 4 foot 10 or around 147 centimetres, she gave hope to other smaller players, Pat's paved the way for the likes of Kerry Baird and Maddie Robinson, players with absolute speed that is hard to control and even harder to counter. I think the game is, for spectators, fantastic. And I think the fact that it has such far-reaching tentacles these days, and I see these young girls, you know, in Warrigal Road on a Saturday afternoon, I see all these young girls and I think, this is wonderful. You know, they're off the streets, they're healthy. Uh, and the, the, the comradeship, the friendships I've, unfortunately a lot of them have gone to God, but the friendships I've had, you know, formed during netball were fabulous, absolutely fabulous. No bitchiness or anything like that, you know, it was um, what you see is what you get, you know. You played a shocking game, but you know, that sort of thing. Tonight, we recognise her significant achievements and special place in our game. Pat Doherty, now Pat McCarthy, joins the top echelon of Australian netballers in the Australian Netball Hall of Fame.